Minister of State Anupriya Patelji, distinguished guests on the dais, distinguished guests in the audience, ladies and gentlemen, do pardon my voice. I am trying to overcome uh, a viral infection of cold. I want to thank uh, the organizers today for having invited me here today on this very auspicious occasion when we celebrate the 28th of July as Hepatitis Day. There have been many debates and discussions throughout the day uh, through various forums and through various speakers, the speakers before me who are more qualified to talk about hepatitis have given you many statistics, so it will be futile for me to uh, dwell on them again. I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to merely reiterate to you that I am absolutely committed to the cause of hepatitis. And if my face, and if my face and my voice can propagate what we need to do towards removal, or at least uh, the detection of this terrible disease, I am there with all the agencies that are now committed to work towards this cause. How this all started uh, has a small story which was hinted upon by uh, Dr. Sareen in his uh, very emotional appeal here when he talked about um, an example of a porter who was denied uh, a job in the Middle East because of the fact that he was diagnosed with hepatitis B. I raised my finger not just to the fact that I happened to play the role of a porter in one of my films. But um, in 1982, ironically, for the same film, uh, during the course of an action sequence, I injured myself. And there were many bottles of blood that were required for my recovery, including bottles of blood and platelets. It, it amounted to almost 60. And we had around 200 donors, and I thank them for it because had it not been for their contribution, I may not have been standing here in front of you today. But unfortunately, one of the donors was carrying the Australian antigen hepatitis B virus, which went into my system. From 1982 onwards, I recovered from uh, the terrible accident and I thank the doctors of Breach Candy Hospital for my recovery. But during the year 2000 and some years into it, through my family doctor, Dr. Barwe, through a random test that I went through, he discovered that I had indeed been infected by hepatitis B and that 75% of my liver had been damaged. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you operating on just 25% of my liver. What is known in medical terms is I am a patient of acute cirrhosis of the liver, something that is normally associated with people and alcohol, but I am a non-alcoholic. I just felt that if I was able to propagate to the masses of this country through what I had been through personally, then it would be a very noble cause that I was taking up. I also took up the cause of tuberculosis because unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm also a tuberculosis survivor in the year 2000. I was quite by accident and by Dr. Barwe uh, diagnosed for tuberculosis in my spine. And uh, we went through a course of medication and I recovered. I want to reiterate here and say strongly that people that are unaware of having themselves diagnosed regularly, 
religiously may perhaps, as Dr. Barve had just mentioned in his speech, be carrying a virus which they are unaware of. Diabetes is another ailment that I work for. Diabetes, hepatitis, they are all silent killers. We are unaware of their presence in our body. And before we know it, it is too late for any kind of action to be taken. My appeal to all of you, and through the various programs that I hope will be designed by the World Health Organization, by the Government of India, I shall be able to propagate this fact that it is most important that all of us become aware of the fact that we need to be going in for some kind of diagnosis, some kind of tests, to at least know what our body contains and if we are unfortunate enough to have this virus within us, then to assure you that a treatment is there, it can be done, and you can be cured. There are wondrous drugs that are coming out now, and I was speaking to uh, our dear friends here who were talking to me about some modern drugs uh, that have been now brought out in Switzerland, where um, the repair to the liver and perhaps repair to the disease is possible. I'm very happy to hear that. I hope that I shall be uh, getting some of those doses myself because I need it. <laughs> and uh, I also want to say that there are various programs that the government does, and I'm happy that there are uh, very capable and able representatives of the government of India here with us today. We need to have a very concerted program, ma'am, to put the program of hepatitis on a more definitive basis. There are lots of budgets, and there has been talk before me on how much money needs to be put. Dr. Sareen put it very ably, uh, comparing the amount of budgets required for roads and for using just 1% of that for hepatitis. But really, we need to have a designated amount of budget put across towards hepatitis so that we can all work towards its eradication. Um, the government of Maharashtra has a wonderful scheme uh, where they help and work along with what is commonly known as the Anganwadi. These are uh, housewives that help in uh, the delivery process when women are pregnant and, and about to deliver. I think it would be a wonderful idea, and if there are people from the government of Maharashtra here today, if they can include uh, this process of how to educate these Anganwadis in hepatitis and give them the opportunity that when they give and help a lady at their birth to also administer to them or, or teach them or educate them at least that they must have the vaccination done which can prevent their child from getting hepatitis. There are many schemes of the government of India which I notice and which I work for, uh, whether it be Swachh Bharat, whether it be Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao. And I notice that there are, there's some kind of a similarity in a lot of what happens. Dr. Prasad mentioned about Swachh Bharat and as you know, which uh, the, the speakers before me have, have educated you, that hepatitis A and uh, E are waterborne uh, viruses and they can be prevented provided we have a clean atmosphere. And that goes along with what Swachh Bharat means. Education and education for, particularly for the Beti, is very important. Uh, I've always maintained and so have many other great philosophers of life, that when you educate a man, you educate an individual. When you educate a woman, you educate an entire family. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I feel we must bring our attention to, that all our women need to be educated so that they can impart that education at the time, let us say, for example, with the Anganwari or the housewife in our villages and in our rural areas that need this attention most importantly. 
I have um, very little else to say, except that I look forward to the time and energy and my dedication and my devotion to this very worthy cause. I am here for you any time of the day or night in whatever way you wish for me to represent this uh, cause. I have dedicated myself to several other causes and whatever you will designate for me, I shall be most willing to do that. I wish to thank all the organizers today, and I wish to say that uh, may there be many such occasions when we can all meet and discuss and leave our impressions because many a times people come and talk and go away. Uh, perhaps that implies for me as well. I will stand in front of a camera and I will recite a few lines which are hepatitis uh, promotional and go away. But I want to reiterate to the World Health Organization and to the government of India and to all the associations that are going to be working that please pay attention to that worker that will go out and propagate this cause right down to the common man. He's the most important person. I say this because when we worked for polio and its eradication and the fact that we achieved uh, this great uh, victory in making India polio free, it was that worker who went down to the smallest villages, to the interiors, and it is they whom we need to acknowledge and respect and honor. And they are the people that are going to work for you, sir and ma'am that will help in propagating this wonderful cause. Please look after them. They are the people that will actually go and work in the fields, and we need to honor them. If ever there is any occasion when they need to be honored and you need my presence there, I shall be more than welcome to be there. Thank you so much.